This is the end automation that essentially has cloned instantly AI. This has cloned MailChimp. And it's worth noting, this performs exceptionally well for service-based businesses. Today is one of those episodes that if you make it to the end, um, there's really no way you don't drive more revenue to your business. So today, cold email. So all cold email outreach, how to dominate this yourself without using instantly AI, without using other email services, MailChimp, et cetera, building your own email outreach system that you can use to reach out to more clients or to service clients. You're going to see it in lifetime as uh, today's one of those episodes that if you make it to the end, um, there's really no way you don't drive more revenue to your business. What's really valuable is that when you combine it with an actual product, an architecture behind that, like actual well-designed offer copy, like frameworks that really pull a soul and a pulse of something, which we'll dive into. Um, you actually have a campaign that performs well. And by industry standard, you see 45 X return on mm. every dollar. And it's worth noting this performs exceptionally well for service-based businesses. Just to get right into it. So this is the end automation that essentially has cloned instantly AI. This has cloned MailChimp. And as you guys know, who are familiar with N8N, if you can self-host this, obviously the cost is much, much cheaper than those two platforms I just mentioned. Obviously, before you send emails, the first thing you need is a lead list. You need a database of leads to actually reach out to. And so this is just an example of a final result of a really, really solid lead database. Obviously, you have name, you have the title of the person, the company they work at, you have their email, which is obviously the most important thing, but you have these other things here that you can use to really kind of lightly and even heavily personalize that email outreach, whether it's the keywords of the company and what they do, whether it's the person's LinkedIn account, whether it's the company's website, et cetera, the company's Facebook URL, Twitter, when that is applicable. But if you want to get this lead database, you could scrape, you could, you know, custom code some complex, you know, crawler to find things, or you could just use platforms that actually do this for you much easier. So I use Apollo. Step one is you basically want to get a list of companies. So I had a project recently where somebody with a staffing company called Sysmine, I'll just show you guys this super quickly so you have context. It's an IT staffing company that basically uh, staffs top tier IT talent, so engineers, et cetera. So he reaches out to these larger companies who need to hire engineers very quickly. And he gave me a database of companies, but this was provided to me from my client. He basically gave me a list of not people, not emails, just companies. So you can see he gave me this how many employees they have, their company websites, et cetera. So from there, I was actually easily able just to go into Apollo, go to the company section, press import, import the CSV. And now you can see these are 1,548 of the companies that he has. But obviously, like you guys are thinking, where are the people? You know, where are the emails? So now from here, all I need to do is just go to select all, apply, and then go to find people. It's literally that easy. And then it'll come in here. And so now, as you can see, the company filter has changed to 1,500 people, 1,500 companies. So it's literally already condensed its entire, you know, millions of people database to just people that work at those 1,500 companies. So let's just say you only want to reach out to CEOs, decision makers at these companies. If you just go to CEO, founder, you can see it's now condensing that list from 450,000 to 1,700, a much more realistic number, founder, owner, et cetera. So now you're only going after those 5,000 decision makers. Now you have an amazing lead list. I had a list of companies at 1,500, and now I have you know all these people that I can reach out to just from those companies. And so now it's as easy as just selecting all those people and then going to export. And you can export all of these 
you can see it'll tell you which emails are verified. So obviously you won't get all of them, but you only get the people who have verified emails. So you're actually saving tokens later on, which is great. And now you have this many emails that you can just go ahead and export as a CSV. And so I'm not going to do this because I've already exported it and this will take up tokens on my account. So I'm not just going to do it for fun. But once you have that downloaded, you can see that I have a full list. This is what I did for him, a basically software engineering directors and VPs. That's just a full list of those people. So here's a real-time example of uh, enriching and learning. So again, leveraging AI to do this, right? In the bottom right, I have something called Cluely, where I hit control enter and I turn on the smart mode and I say, hey, research this company. But as you can see here, give me a nice little summary. This is a lot of material. I can actually use this. I can even say, hey, Reese, I want to reach out to this company. What do I need to include to personalize my outreach? Artis & Co., one of the top co-pilots right now, sales co-pilots with AI, they're very much focused on outbound AI-powered stuff. Caveat with them, minimum pricing, as you see, is not available on the site, is 10 k mm -hmm. So I looked at this, and I was like, all right, how do I take that enterprise design and apply it you know, downstream? Yep. You can scrape their website, scrape their social media, X, LinkedIn. Uh, you can check any press releases, funding announcements, even talk about schools if you want, previous jobs, same city, same state, material they've spoken about, job titles if there's a relational piece there, um, the service offering between one company to the other, and then you approaching them saying, hey, here's how you're better. They'll be like, okay, we like this guy. Um, the next piece is job postings. So if you see jobs that they're releasing and you can either service them or you know people that can, like there's so many ways you can kind of approach the personalization piece, right? The next section of this video is going to be a technical breakdown of how to set up this automation. It's one of the most important parts of it where it basically filters out, you know, if an email is at a certain stage. The most important part here is that I set the condition of if the email stage is set to one, then it's going to continue through this like step one first email. And so for that, I had to actually create a separate column called email stage and then add the number one to it. And then from there, this is the actual set or edit fields nodes. That is what is actually creating the actual email message. So you'll notice the format of this may look weird to you if you're not familiar with HTML. So if I come here, you guys can see this is the actual email copy, just in regular plain text. You can see, hey, first name, I'll keep this short. And same thing over here. You can easily use GBT or whatever LLM you choose to convert from plain text to HTML. This is where the hyper-personalization comes in. So for me personally, I'm lightly personalizing this email, but Essentially how I broke down this, this entire GBT node is I set it up like you are a B2B email copywriter. So it knows a little bit about me. I'm not using the message and assistant node. So I had to give it this context. And then from there, I gave it the sentence that I wanted it to personalize and change. So I told her that the email contains a placeholder sentence. And this is actually super important because if you go back to the actual email message or the edit fields node, you can see in here that I included a full line that just says, replace me. So this is what GPT is looking at and saying, I'm going to leave everything else in this email alone, but I'm only going to look at this line and include the personalization there. It's basing the personalization off of the person's company name, job title, industry, and keywords. And so that's one of the good things about Apollo is that They'll give you, of course, the industry, but they'll also give you keywords on that person's business. So because I'm reaching out to construction companies, obviously not all con construction companies are the same. Some of them do irrigation. Some of them do design and build. So just by having the company name alone, it can start to infer, but also having the keywords, it makes it that much easier for GPT to be able to infer what automations they may need and how to position my agency. That's kind of how I prompt GPT to allow me to lightly personalize the emails. I give it a few examples. All of these actual solutions are things that I can easily provide. This is GPT helping me infer what kind of automations they might need. And then obviously I make sure they keep the tone conversational. I spend a lot of time on this node because this is very important to be able to actually generate 
the personalization. This is where you can like kind of vary based on how you want to personalize, you know. You could take in the LinkedIn profile and you can say, you know, based on the words they use when they post, infer what their psychological profile may be, they're more agreeable or if they're more neurotic. You know, you could personalize it that much, but for me right now, I just want to start with that. The output from this GPT module, as you can see, is only one sentence. It's only that personalization sentence. So I have to basically combine now this sentence back into the full base email where it says replace me. And that's what this code node is doing. It's essentially identifying, okay, this is that base email HTML that I set before inside of here. This is that base email HTML. This is the first, the personalized line that GBT just generated here. They're now replacing the replace me with a personalized line. So I did use GBT to generate this code, but I have enough understanding of the language to be able to edit this accordingly. You might be wondering now, okay, the email message is ready. The personalization is done. How are the emails actually getting sent to people? And that's where Mailgun comes in. Mailgun is an email service provider that has API services. You can connect your domain inside of Mailgun, and then they will literally give you the ability to get an API key and connect it here so you can automatically send emails. The from email is where I'm going to send it from. And then the to email that's being mapped dynamically. So that's another good thing about automating with an add-in. You can easily plug in variables here. So I can include the company name there. And then the actual message to be able to actually put that in to what gets sent. I literally just drag the HTML from the last node into here that's fully ready to go in html format so this is full end-to-end -end dynamically pulling the entry from the database personalizing the email sending the email and then re-updating the database based on what happened if you are a service-based business your sales cycles typically look like this you begin with a unqualified problem unaware solution unaware prospect they have no idea who you are. They have no idea what you do. Um, and there's a 30% chance they stay like that. After they engage with you, there's a 10% chance they're lost. And if they're lost and confused, there's a one-to-one -one chance they stay there and they don't trust you. If they do trust you, there's a 60% chance they'll move on to actually engaging with you, talking about your material, exploring what you're sharing, actually responding to your email, reaching out to you. And this may be in one stage. This may be in four to five depends on your business, right? They'd be getting a quote. They'd essentially, you know, they're engaging with you to figure out more. 20% chance they realize they don't even, this isn't something they want. They're just kind of curious. They're kind of like, eh, sure, cool. Sounds great. 30% chance they're like, I got to find out more. I got to learn more about this. They don't feel too confident. 50% um, chance they move on to trusting you more because you bridge that gap. You exchange some kind of value that actually builds that and refines that trust. Here's where the magic happens if I zoom out a bit. So the people that trust you, 10% chance, hopefully less, they fall backwards. 20% chance they still stay in that limbo, that in-between, that non-decision-making kind of place. 70% chance they actually move forward to being like yeah, qualified. They are problem-aware now and solution-aware. And they are probably going to close with you. Now, just because of circumstances and general numbers, 50% chance they actually do that. They close, they move forward with you. 20% chance they stay in that limbo. And then, funny enough, as a 30% chance they stop <laughs> engaging with you altogether. So yeah. if they trust you the most and they made it this far and they're qualified, but you don't respond within 24 hours, you, you know, don't actually help them, um, you show some sort of uh, gap in the trust building you lose them. But if you have the systems and the design in place and you're thinking it far ahead enough and you do end up closing them, the real magic is one-to-one. -one. If they do close with you, either they know somebody or them themselves would go through the whole process willingly again. How well can you show them that you know your stuff and that you can really help them? That requires you to have enough internal reflection and systems in place to support them when they say yes and they're ready to pay. How do we ensure that we get there? And this is before we reach out to anybody, before we send a single piece of copy, a single email, we look at frameworks. The first bucket 
is a niche snap. Colloquial term, this will be available in the description through a Gumroad download, as will all the other frameworks. All you need to do is essentially copy it, feed it into a language model and say, hey, remember this. Um, I actually have it at the top here. Remember this framework anytime I say niche nap. You can change the term. If you don't like it, name it whatever. Name it apples, bananas. The idea is what it gives you is this 10 section skeleton where all the magic lives. So it looks at a total addressable market. It tells you what it is. It gives you a snapshot. It gives you a profit signal, a lead score form formula, a ROI breakdown, which you spoke about earlier, pain to offer mapping based on what you're providing, mm -hmm. personalization angles, which are still a bit generalist, um, and then just how to reach out, how to make a you know an actual tangible bridge. This combined with other frameworks has a lot of value. OfferFrame is another skeleton brought about by Alex Ramosi and a lot of inspiration from it, which essentially breaks down packaging. So what is what am i delivering and not just a hook format but something that's memorable and outcome focused very different than a lot of other hooks um, a lot of other hooks are more i don't say a lot but sometimes hooks can be virality based clickbaity like you know promise in this case the promise we're delivering is outcome focused that also orients us towards the dream result what does a transformation look like in one line before and after right in order for me to process this that requires some time, but having a framework to do it gives me a mechanism to show why it works, my unique process, the deliverables included in this, pricing possibilities, guarantees, which allow me to essentially just frame risk, right, and address it off the bat, um, and proof, right? A lot of different moving pieces. Here's the piece. You don't need to remember these things. If you train your language model and AI as an intelligence system and a thinking assistant, you can copy this, feed it in. One last bucket, hook frames. This works well, and there's a reason for the order of things here, when you have the other things well laid out. So when you have a transformation, a challenge, a call to action, all these different pieces that you can orient an audience towards, highlight their pain, showcase the dream, and illustrate a timeline, also addressing any objections and cost. Like This allows you to get 80% of the way, and the last 20% is where real, the magic happens. If you guys want kind of like the second part of this, where we dive deep into the post code email funnel of just like Jonathan was saying of like, what happens when you get 100 responses? You know, what is your way to nurture and actually convert those leads? Just let us know in the comments. 